Hi guys, and welcome back to another week. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us. So this week, we're in another week of vibes. So vibes are like emotions. And the thing about emotions is that we all experience them in our lives. And sometimes without even realizing it, those vibes can end up controlling us in a way that is not at all healthy. So we end up being controlled by our vibes, being controlled by our emotions. And today, I want us to talk about one of the vibes that fights to control us, which is fear. So with fear, all of us have experienced fear in some other form. Um, it's either kept us from trying new things, it's kept us from being adventurous, it even you know, has hurt our friendships and different relationships. For me, I, I can you know, call myself pretty adventurous now that I've gotten over this fear, but um, I remember I was on a girl's trip um, in Jamaica and we all decided that we were gonna go parasailing. So with parasailing, you basically have a boat and like a parachute type situation that is, so you're basically floating in the air and the faster that the boat goes, you know, the higher you go um, up into the air. So that was one of the activities that we discussed. I had never done it before, but you know, I didn't want to be a chicken, so I decided to do it anyway. So the whole time leading up to me um, being holstered into whatever the seating compartment was for us to go up into the air, like I had so much anxiety and was so fearful. But something that I do when I, you know, feeling myself with getting a lot of fear or anxiety, I try to calm myself down by breathing and then praying as well. So we took off and it actually was a very calming experience. Like the whole time I was up there, I was just in awe of how beautiful everything was and how great God's creation is. And so that's just, you know, one-off situation. There's been plenty of times where I've been fearful before and have had to realize that I cannot let that control me. So that being said, the crazy thing about fear is that our ability to experience it is something that makes us human. It's completely normal. You know, we are where we are today because the human race has been able to, you know, accumulate knowledge. They've been able to build on that knowledge and then project that into the future. So I think we all can agree that the hope side is awesome. We love imagining, we love dreaming, we love inventing, but a lot of that that you don't see, you know, on the backside is that fear that people have when they're wanting to create and wanting to invent things. But as you can imagine, if people were to let that fear cripple them, we wouldn't have a lot of the things that we have today. And we all know that the what ifs make us feel a bit crazy, if I must say myself. Think about the last time that you were afraid about how much of your day was spent thinking as well as stressing over it. If you're anything like me, it's most of your day. You're thinking about it, you're working through scenarios, trying to plan out what to say in your head, when really Jesus has a lot to say and there's a lot of good news when it comes to that. The problem is we tend to read verses where Jesus talks about fear. And for example, Jesus said, fear not. In other words, when it comes to fear, just stop and quit. Not exactly helpful, right? <laughs> so today, I want you to look at a passage where Jesus talks to some of his close friends about fear, but with a little bit more context. So we're gonna dive straight into this lesson. So Jesus had 12 main people who followed him around and who learned from him. And these 12 people are known as the 12 disciples. So he was their teacher and they were his disciples. So they also happened to be close friends of his. And at one point he tells them this, I'm going to send you out like sheep among wolves. Matthew 10 verse 16, think about it. Wolves are like predators. Anything that you read about, anything that you see in movies, wolves are often associated with fear. 
and sheep are the prey. So Jesus is like, so you guys are the prey and I'm throwing you out to the wolves. That's basically what this verse is saying. And then he gets more literal. He tells them that they will also be arrested and beaten. Who in the world would want to go through that? And to wrap it all up, he tells them not to be afraid those things are going to come. Sounds easy, not really. But when you look at the context of it, this is all part of a bigger story. Jesus took his friends on a field trip before this conversation and it was all connected. They were all in a boat in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And while they were there, Matthew, who's one of Jesus' disciples, said this happened. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. And this is in Matthew 8, verse 24. Jesus and his disciples were on a small boat in the middle of the water. So imagine being out in open waters in the ocean and this big storm is taking place. Like, honestly, I would be scared as well. And without warning, the storm showed up at that. And what is Jesus doing in the middle of all this? He's literally sleeping. Like, can you imagine being in open water and there's a huge storm going on and one of us is just sleeping. So the disciples were scared and they were freaking out and just worried about their lives, which I would be as well. So naturally they wake Jesus up, casually they head over to him and say, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And this is in Matthew 8 verse 25. The disciples are frustrated. They feel alone, you know, and the person that's supposed to be protecting them is pretty much chilling, if, if we could all agree. So they want their leader to calm them down and he's sleeping. How does he respond? So Jesus said to them, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? And this is in Matthew 8 verse 26. So I can only imagine the disciples' responses when Jesus says this to them. He was teaching them about fear and that's the main lesson in all of this. So he gets up, he doesn't panic, which is used to kind of make a point. No matter how scary a circumstance may be, Jesus says to stay calm. And in this situation, Jesus himself stayed calm. Then Matthew says that Jesus spoke to the wind and to the waves and they calmed down. So the disciples were amazed. They responded by saying this, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him, Matthew 8, verse 27. In a moment, their confidence in Jesus overwhelmed their fear of the storm in just a matter of seconds. And that's the whole point of the field trip. This is the whole point why, why Jesus even took them through this, to show them that there is someone bigger and more capable of handling whatever situation that they may have been going through. And this is true for all of us as well. Jesus he is here as a constant remind us that he's always with us and for us to fear not. We all know that fear will always be a part of our experience. We're humans, that's, that's natural. So fear is a part of what makes us human, but we do not have to live like fear is in charge of us and telling us what to do. There's a guy named Peter, who was also one of Jesus' uh, disciples or closest friends, and fear no longer controlled Peter. So he gave some tips about fear in a letter that he writes to Christians who never had a chance to meet Jesus themselves. Peter says this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And this is found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. When Peter says cast, he means to throw, to hurl. When you feel anxiety, fear, or worry, take it and throw it to Jesus. Why, you may ask? Because of Jesus, fear doesn't have to be the boss of you. So here's what I want you to do. When fear becomes the vibe and when fear starts to take over your life and to control your emotions, do this. Name whatever it is that you're afraid of, write it down, 
and then throw that fear to Jesus. Talk to a small group leader about any fears that you may be having, any positive influences in your life that you feel comfortable with sharing those fears, and they can definitely give you some sound advice as well. But most of all, you want to remember to, to cast all your cares on him because he does care for you. So as we wrap it up today, I hope that you guys all will remember that these vibes, these emotions, these feelings, they don't have to control us, especially fear. So while we can learn from our emotions, we need to know that because of Jesus, they don't have to be the boss of us. Let's be bold and let's be courageous. Let's be bold enough to share the fears that we face. And together, we can help, help each other so that we may fear not. Thanks for tuning in guys, and I hope you enjoy this week's lesson.